Hi, I'm Delilah from Beverly Hills, Los Angeles. Before I continue, please hit like and subscribe. I was two when my rich uncle adopted me and took me to his huge mansion. I was bigger than most kids my age, but he accepted me with all his heart, unlike his son, Rusty. Rusty was six years older, and even though he had everything, it wasn't enough because he wanted it all for himself. We shared our birthdays, so when I turned three, Uncle threw us a joint party. Why does she get the bigger cake? Isn't she big enough already? Don't be mean. It's Delilah's first birthday with us. Now smile for the pictures. But Rusty just threw the cake and walked off. I felt so bad. I don't think he likes me. Oh, sweetie, don't worry. He'll come around. But he never did. If anything, Rusty became more bitter. I did great at school, while all he did was laze around. So Uncle started paying me more attention. And he hated that. When I was 10, I won the state spelling bee competition, and Uncle took me to an amusement park to celebrate. I was very excited, till the operator refused to let me on one of the rides. This is not for teens, it's for kids only. Uh, yeah, Pff, of course, I knew that. I just wanted to see how the rides worked. I'll leave. Did he think I was a teen? I'm only 10. I darted faster than a bullet as the crowd stared, and after that day, I started getting more conscious of my height. I was 13 and almost 5 feet 11 inches, which was weird for my age. I was taller than most boys in my class. I didn't let that get to me, but it gave Rusty a chance to pick on me. He would call me Giant, Bigfoot, whatever came to his mind. To make up for his behavior, Uncle gave me the biggest room in the house and stuffed it with gifts and toys. Sure, she needs a bigger room with that size. You don't have to be so mean, okay? I know I'm tall, but you're dumb and I never make fun of that. You, I will get you for this. He chased me for an hour but couldn't come close. Hmm, who knew I could run like that? I wanted to see how good I was, so I started practicing with the track team. And soon, I beat everyone. My long legs made me super fast. This was awesome. Uncle was proud, but it pissed Rusty off, and he went completely off the rails. He failed 12th grade twice, and blew all his money on his girlfriends without blinking. One evening, Uncle had to bail him out of jail in the middle of the night for stealing exam papers. Luckily, he was the school trustee, so Rusty only got suspended for a week. Why do you embarrass me like this? Where did I go wrong? Oh, that's easy. You got her at home, and you forgot about your son. That's not true. Uncle loves you just as he loves me. Don't act like you're part of this family, and never interrupt me again. Enough! Uncle and Rusty had a huge fight that night, and a week later, Rusty went to London to finish college. I never saw him again, and he hardly called home. I didn't miss him much, but Uncle did, and it made me sad to see him unhappy. Things went back to normal in a few years. At 17, I was a whopping six feet and the tallest girl in school. People would stare at me all the time and say the weirdest things. Can you even hear me up there, or should I scream? Wow, where do you buy your clothes from? The tent shop? All my clothes are limited edition, and that makes me unique, while you're just so common. I didn't let anyone talk me down, but it still bothered me. I wanted to buy cute clothes and wear pretty shoes, but nothing fit me. One time in the mall, I was window shopping when a flying figure went past me, getting chased by some guards. Let me go! I need this! I couldn't see who the girl was, so I walked closer, but I tripped on a huge rack and all the clothes fell on our heads. Guards got distracted and lost their grip and she ran away. And I ended up paying for all the ruined clothes that didn't even fit me. Later that day, I saw my uncle packing up when I went home. Are we going somewhere? Uh, no, dear, I am. We're opening a new business in Greece and I'll be out for a month. But can I come with you? I want you to concentrate on your school and practice. I'll be back before you know it. The day my uncle left, I felt super weird. I'd never been on my own. And a week later, I got the worst news of my life. My uncle's secretary told me he'd caught a rare fever and was on total bed rest. Doctors had no idea how long it would take him to recover. I was devastated and wanted to visit uncle, but no one was allowed near him since the fever was contagious. So I decided to concentrate on my finals. But after my last exam, I came home to Rusty and a girl who looked oddly familiar. What are you doing here? This is my home, and I can come by whenever I want. 
By the way, this is Gina, my girlfriend, and the queen of this house. I looked at Gina, but she ignored me completely. Rude. Later that day, when I crossed their room, I heard her arguing with Rusty. You have a sister? You never told me about her. She wasn't worth mentioning, and she won't stay here for long. Before I could hear anything else, the maid showed up, and I left. For the entire week, I noticed that Gina was an odd duck. She stayed all day in her room. Whenever she came out, she would scream at the servants and run back up. One time, I was in my room when Gina walked in. Empty your room. I need more closet space. You can't just walk in here and ask me to do stuff. Get it? Suddenly, she started screaming for Rusty. And that's when it hit me. She was the same girl from the mall. Wait a minute. I know you. You're... What is it, darling? I thought you were rich, but my room here is smaller than my bathroom. I need more space, so move her. I'm not going anywhere. You are, and you will. Or you can pack your bags and get out. Your choice. What? You can't do that. Now that Dad's not here, I'm your legal guardian. So, if you want to keep running or going to school, stop bugging me and get moving. Ugh, so annoying. I immediately wanted to call my uncle, but he was too sick to bother. So I kept my head low and started packing. Before I left, I kept a parting gift for Gina and laughed my butt off when she went around crying over her half-eaten clothes. Much deserved. That night, I searched for Gina on the internet, but the girl was a dead end. I knew she was lying, but there was something else she was hiding. Something big. I could feel it. The next morning, I found Rusty alone and tried to warn him. Your girlfriend is a liar, and you're giving me a headache. I'm serious. I saw her stealing from the mall just last month. Gina's family is one of the richest in London. She doesn't need to steal. You can fool my dad, but not me. I'm smarter. I need Gina. Don't screw this up or I'll be your worst nightmare. Rusty walked away, and I couldn't help thinking about how this was possible. I was almost certain I'd seen her. But if Gina was rich, then maybe I was mistaken. This was so confusing. I shrugged the thoughts away and left for school. But I was super distracted that day during practice and twisted my ankle while running. I couldn't walk, so the school called someone to pick me up. And Gina showed up. You should have just sent a driver. I was in the neighborhood. Now come on, I don't have all day. She helped me to the car and I tried to talk to her, but she was on her phone the entire ride home. And the moment we got home, she ran to her room without even helping me out. What was wrong with her? For the next week, I rested at home. And every time I would try to get close to Gina's room, Rusty would ask me to back off. He was so paranoid that he had guards outside her room. Is she a princess? Why do you need so much security? Jeez, that's none of your business. She's my girlfriend, and I'll do whatever she wants. Buzz off. The more Rusty said stuff like that, the more curious I got. He didn't love anyone but himself. So all this newfound love for Gina was very weird. I wanted to know more, but soon after, the coach started training us for international track events, and I got busy. Sometime later, Uncle's secretary informed us that they were moving him to a bigger facility, and Gina threw a party the same day. Guess you're very happy that Uncle's not coming back anytime soon, right? What? No, it's my mom's birthday. Really? Then how come she's not here? Because she's not around anymore. Gina started tearing up as she ran upstairs, and just then Rusty showed up. I knew it. What did you say to her? Relax. I'm sorry. I think I may have stepped over a line. I'll apologize. You better, or I won't give you permission to run track. Get that? I went upstairs to find Gina sobbing in her room with her mom's picture. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I know how you feel. I grew up without my parents, too. I just miss her a lot. Even though she can't be with me, I throw her a party every year. My mom loved birthdays. Gina and I chatted for a bit, and I realized she wasn't as bad as I thought. I could see how deeply she missed her mom, which made me feel connected to her. Maybe I judged her too soon. Gina warmed up to me after that, and we often hung out. But soon, I noticed how she'd only talk to me when Rusty wasn't around. I asked her one day, and she gave me the weirdest reply. Oh no, I'm just taking a break from all the wedding preparations. Wow, I had no idea. Do we have a date? We wanted to wait for his dad to come back. Gina sounded super excited, but when I asked Rusty about it, he shrugged it off. Didn't I ask you to keep your tall head out of my business? Just don't break her heart, okay? Whatever. I knew he wouldn't listen to me, but I had to try. Gina deserved better than this moron. 
A few days later, we had the school dance, and I decided not to go. No boy in school had asked me out yet, and showing up alone was humiliating. When Gina heard, she volunteered to tag along. I don't know what's more embarrassing, not having a date or having your almost sister-in-law as a date. Just keep your head high, and you'll rock. I followed her advice and was having a great time, till I heard someone screaming from the other side of the room. It was Gina howling at a girl from my class. Don't you get tired of bullying each other? So she's a little tall. She's way better than all of you, including these frat boys you crush on. You can't match her at all. Literally. I pulled her away, but she continued shouting till we reached the entrance. What was that all about? These people were saying weird stuff about you. I couldn't take it. I'm used to it, and I can take my own stand. I know. It's just that I was bullied as a kid, and this stuff gets to me. Okay, forget about it. We're here, so let's enjoy the dance. Come on. Gina and I danced the night away without giving a fig about anyone, and had the best time. And a week later, I got busy with track practice. I had back-to-back -back events, and the coach was very tough on us. But it all paid off when I got selected. I immediately called my uncle, but his phone went straight to voicemail. I was excited to tell Gina about it, but I came home to loud noises coming from Rusty's office. How could you do this to me? You thought this was forever? Your job here is done. Pack your stuff and leave. Gina stormed out furiously. I was sure Rusty must have backed out of the wedding, and I wanted to make sure she was okay, so I followed her. I saw her enter a hospital and go into a room with a frail woman. Machines beeped around everywhere as she smiled at Gina. Oh, it's been so long. My darling daughter, Shelly. I'm sorry it took so long, Mom. I have to wrap something up, and after that, I'll get you out of here soon enough. So, her name was Shelly? And her mom was alive? Who was this person, and what did she want? I had so many questions. I wanted to go inside, but looking at her mother's condition, I decided to wait for her at home. But there, I had another surprise waiting for me. Uncle was home, and he was going ballistic on Rusty over some papers. Uncle, you're back. How are you? I was so stressed when I found out about your illness. I was fine, Delilah. In fact, I was more than okay. What do you mean? I'm ashamed to even say this, but my own son got me kidnapped for property. Thankfully, the police found me just in time. Kidnapped? How is that possible? I spoke to your secretary. He wasn't my secretary. I went there alone. Uncle sat me down and told me that someone had stolen his phone before he got on the plane, and then, on his way home, he was kidnapped. A few months back, Rusty had called him up asking for a million dollars, and when Uncle refused to pay him, he planned to get him kidnapped and force him to sign the company over. I looked at Rusty in shock, and he didn't show any remorse. Yeah, so I did it. You gave everything to her, leaving me with nothing. But then I met Gina, and she's so freaking rich. So with her help, I could have thrown you both out. You're so evil. Who would do that to their own father? Someone who doesn't care about anyone but himself. I thought I told you to leave, Gina. Call me Shelly, and I'm not your slave, and I'm not rich either. Gina told us how Rusty was a wanted con man in London who'd scammed many people, including her dad. So she pretended to be rich so she could date him, help him sell the company, and leave with the money. The money he stole was for my mom's surgery. We fell into debt paying her hospital bills. I wanted to get back at him, but he tried to fool me again. I told the police where your uncle was. That doesn't make it right, Gina. You lied to us. But you helped Uncle, and for that, I'm thankful. As Uncle called the police and Gina sobbed, I saw Rusty sneaking out with the papers, but I grabbed him just in time. Think you can outrun me? Tch, <laughs> you wish. Rusty got arrested for kidnapping and embezzlement. Gina got called in for questioning and received a six-month sentence for helping Rusty, after which we paid her mother's treatment and even compensated other people Rusty had conned. Soon, it was time to leave for my international track events, and my uncle came to drop me off. Make me proud. Haven't I always? Uncle hugged me, and it felt like home.